Okay, hello ulit sa inyo. So, discussion tayo, no? Uh, dito na ta- kakatapos lang natin ng Title 7. Now, let's go to Title 8. Now, dito sa title, sa title 8, it talks about the corporate books and records ng corporation. Alam, corporate books and records. And madaling discussion lang to kasi dalawang sections lang to. So, let's go to section 72. Ah, 73, I mean, which talks about the books to be kept, stock transfer agent. So, basahin natin. Fast reading lang. Kung gusto nyo, i-post nyo. Kasi mahaba-haba itong section 73. Now, every corporation shall keep and carefully preserve at its principal office, all information relating to the corporation, including but not limited to. So, ito yung mga required na isama or records na ikip sa principal office ng corporation. But, pwede pa itong madagdagan ng other relay, uh, necessary records. Gaya ng articles and bylaws, uh, articles and corporation, pati bylaws, current ownership, names address ng ano, board of directors, records of all business transactions, mga typical records to. Mga board resolution, copies of latest reportorial requirements, submitted to commission, minutes of the meeting. So, basahin nyo na lang. Now, corporate records, regardless of the form which they are uh, stored, shall be open to inspection. O, mapaw- karapatan niya nila, rights to inspection. By any director, trustee, stockholder, or member ng corporation, in person or by their representative, at reasonable hours on business days. So, kung 12 midnight yan, yan reasonable hours. So, hindi mo... Pu- you have no right to demand the corporation to inspect the books pag 12 midnight ka na gano. And a demand in writing may be made by such director, trustee, or stockholder at the expense for copies of such records received, uh, records or excerpts from said records. The inspecting or reproducing parties shall remain bound by the confidentiality. So, hindi na pwede kalat. Under prevailing laws, such as the rules on trade secrets or process under ito, mga, ba- uh, mga batas, which prevents the ano, in uh, breaking the confidentiality dapat secret lang a requesting party who is not a stockholder or member ng corporation on record or is a competitor director officer controlling stockholder other represents the interest of the competitor shall have no right to inspect or demand the uh, demand reproduction ng corporate records halangan wala kang labot din sa corporation na yan eh. bakit ka magdi-demand ano ka Karen so any stockholder who shall abuse the rights Granted, under this section, shall be penalized under section 158. So, may penal clause yung ano natin, device corporation code. Uh, uh, ano lang, to, for information lang, yung penal clause, ibig sabihin yan yung portion ng mga batas natin na kung saan, if nilabag mo yung provisions ng batas na yun, yung penal clause yung magpo-provide ng anong parusa yung ibibigay sa'yo. Either imprisonment or fine lang. Or both. Depende sa batas. So, penal clause yung tawag doon. And dito, pag nilabag mo daw to, yung section 70, pag nilabag mo daw, paparusaan ka under section 158 of this code. Without prejudice to the provisions of this following code, uh, following statutes. Any officers or agent ng corporation who shall refuse to allow the inspection and or reproduction ng record in accordance with the provision of the code, magiging liable sila. To such director, trust, or stockholders for damages in addition shall be guilty of an offense which shall be punishable uh, under 161 of this code. So, dito sa taas, kapag nilabag ng stockholder yung ano, section 73, yung rights niya to inspect the books, malanagot siya sa section 158. Yan yung magpaparusa sa kanya. Dito naman, kapag i-refuse yung right to inspection and reproduction ng officer or agent ng corporation, yung magpaparusa sa kanya is yung section 161 ng code. Eh. Provided lang na that if such refusal is made pursuant to a resolution or order ng board of directors, the liability under such and this section for such action shall be imposed upon the directors of trustees who voted for such refusal. Alangan. Itong officer agent, in this case na pag-utusan lang, bakit siya yung paparusahan? E di yung nag-utos yung paparusahan, nag-utos na mag-refuse, which in this case, the board or trustees. The board, uh, the director or the trustees. Provided further that it shall be a defense to any action 
under this section that the person demanding to examine and copy the excerpts from the corporation's records and minutes has improperly used any information secured through any prior examination of the records or minutes of such corporation or any other corporation. Ibig sabihin, pag may record ka na na ginamit mo sa hindi tamang gawain, yung nirequest mong records, may history ka ng ano, improperly usage, then pwede kang ano, rightfully ma-refuse na i-exercise yung right to inspection and uh, reproduction mo. Oo, pag may prior records ka na hindi tamang paggamit ng corporate records. Or another one is was not acting in good faith or for a legitimate purpose in making the demand to examine or reproduce reproduce corporate records or as a competitor, director or officer controlling stockholders that represents the interest of the corporation. So basically, itong second portion ng paragraph ito basically says na may defense ka to refuse. May mga reasonable grounds ka to refuse the right to refuse the inspection and reproduction. Ito yung mga grounds na maging valid yung pag-refuse mo. Oh, if the corporation denies or does not act on a demand for inspection and or reproduction, yung aggrieved party na nag-demand for inspection and reproduction, pwede niyang i-report yan sa Securities Exchange Commission. And within 5 days from the receipt of such report, the commission shall conduct summary investigation and issue an order directing the inspection or reproduction of the requested records. Na itong mga summary proceedings na to, summary investigations, under our judicial system, basically meaning yan, paspasan mabilis ang investigasyon. Kaya nga, summary, investigation. Silence ko nga itong phone. So, stock corporations must also keep a stock and transfer book which shall contain the record of all stocks in the name of stockholders alphabetically, alphabetically arranged. The installment paid and unpaid on all stocks for which subscription has been made and other, ano, other, ano ito, other information, etc., etc. Ito about sa stock transfer agent, uh, engagement sa business, dapat independent siya, basahin niya lang, etc. etc. Okay, post nyo. Woo! Basahin, okay, goods. So, ito, salient points and remarks. Basically, ano mga naging improvements and changes nito as compared sa old corporation code natin na BP68. So, the revised corporation code specified the books to be kept sa corporate, so, sa corporation's principal office. So, dati hindi specific yun. Ngayon, specified na talaga. It includes the guidelines in case of denial or request for reproduction or infor inspection of records. Ito, guidelines. Ah, ito. Refusal. Uh, the revised code provides that the commission may require stock corporation which transfers or trade stocks uh, in secondary markets to have independent transfer agent. Ito. Ito naman. Changes exhaustively to corporate books and records that must be preserved at the principal office. Ito. Exhaustively. It must include the following, but it is not limited to. So, pwede pa yung dagdagan. Oh, ito, inspection, confidentiality rules. Okay. Kasi pag nilabag mo yan, pwede kang makasuhan under section 158 ng code. Ito, stockholders. Okay. So, books and records under the corporation code. Ito yung mga kailangan i-keep. Under special laws, in addition, corporation must keep the books and records required by special laws like Public Service Act, General Banking Law, National Internal Revenue Code, Labor Code, and other. Persons given the right to inspect corporate books while the right, while the right of inspection of corporate books is granted as a matter of precedent or practice in other jurisdiction, it is one that is recognized by express provision of our corporation law. That right is granted by the law. Ganun lang yun. It is a right granted by the law. The right to inspect corporate books. What law? The device corporation code of the Philippines. Any director, trustee, or stockholder member. So sabi ng section 70, the records of all business transactions of the corporation, the minutes meeting shall be open to the inspection of the director, trustee, stockholder, member of the corporation at reasonable hours on business days. Karapatan nila yan. But it is absolute? But is it absolute? No. Later slides yun. Voting task certificate holder. The word stockholder as used in section 73 means not only a stockholder record. Ito. Ala, if you can still remember, di ba? Yung voting trust agreement natin na kung saan this stockholder or group of stockholder pinagkatiwala nila yung kanilang ano, yung kanilang shares kay trustee uh, executed to a 
through a voting trust agreement then itong si trustee uh, as an evidence of ano of this voting trust agreement as an evidence na trustee siya and may trustor siya bibigyan niya ng uh, voting trust certificate yung mga trustors niya and with that sabi dito the word stockholder as used in section 73 means not only a stockholder of record kasi di ba si trustee after ng execution ng voting trust agreement after ma-inform ng Securities and Exchange Commission and ng corporate papalitan na yung uh, uh, stockholder of record na instead yung mga trustor na si trustee na yung stockholder of record di ba ganun yung process na nangyari now in this case it includes a voting trust certificate holder who has become merely the equitable owner of the shares transferred So dito kahit na hindi ka na stockholder of record pero kapag voting trust certificate holder ka ikaw yung trustor you still have the right to inspect the corporate books goods pa rin yun stockholder pa sequestered company saan namin na sequestered basically ang meaning yan tinago hinide mo in isolate na company so in this case kapag stockholder ka nun, may karapatan ka pa rin na inspect examine ng corporate books Mm -hmm. The act of sequestration of property does not import or bring about a divestment of the title over a uh, title said property in relation to the property sequestered, frozen, or provisionally taken over. The sequestration, uh, the, sequ the sequestrating authority is a conservator, not an owner. Basically, yung sequestered company, in-isolate yan siya eh. Beneficial owners of share, a beneficial owner of shares, buyer from record, di ba? Pledge, judgment, debt, or may also be given the right. Ito yung mga remedies and sanctions for the enforcement of such right. Action for mandamus or damages. Ano yung action for mandamus? Sir? Basically, it is an action filed to compel the other party to perform. Yan si action for mandamus. From the word mandatory. You will compel the other party to perform. Kung ano man yung kailangan ipa-perform sa kanya. Yan. And uh, or damages dito. So, in case the officers of the corporation wrongfully denies a stockholder or member of the right to inspect the corporate books or papers, yung usual remedy is to, is to enforce the right by filing sa commission an action for mandamus. Magre-report siya sa Security Exchange Commission. The secretary should be included as a party dependent since such official customarily, ano, sa yung may duty, di ba, sa custody na, yun yung trabaho ng secretary, custodian ng corporate records, corporate doc documents. Now, in a proper case, the stockholder may maintain an action for damages which he may have sustained by the wrongful denial. So, yung mga action for damages, you need to prove that in court kung, naka, kung meron ka talagang na-receive na damages. Like, ano, actual damages, moral damage, di ba? Kailangan niyang patunayan sa korte bago mag-grant yan. Civil and criminal liability. Now, under section ano, section 73, di ba? Any officer agent ng corporation who shall refuse to allow or any uh, to allow any director, trustee, stockholder, member corporation to examine the ano, the copy excess from the basta to refuse the right to inspection and reproduction shall be guilty as an offense punishable shall be uh, under okay mali tayo 19158 okay kasi ang 158 pertains to the stockholder who shall abuse his right ang 161 to yung refusal. Walang karapatang mag-refuse or walang legal basis to refuse. 168 dapat yun. Sana yun. Edit na lang natin. 1 No, hindi ang pag-type. So, sana yun tayo. So, maging parusa sa under 158. However, if such refusal is pursuant to sa resolution ng board, ibig sabihin yung officer agent na yun na pag-utusan lang, then yung board yung magiging liable. Nevertheless, the officer agent denying such inspections may be held civilly liable for damages. Anong basis for this right of inspection? Basis, una is beneficial ownership of corporate assets. Alangan, nung bumili ka ng stock, kasama doon yung right of ownership. Nag-invest ka sa corporation. Or owner, owner ka na ng corporation. Equity interest mo yun. Those in charge of the corporation are merely the stockholder or members' agents. Ano yun sila? Sino-sino yun sila? Mga ano? Board of Directors, uh, agents, uh, agents, officers, and, uh, tag dito, officers, and, saan dito? Anong other word yun? 
officers wait lang ah kalimutan ko oh officer agent pala yun bakit ni <laughs> kanin So, army agents, yung mga officer, yung mga board of directors, concerning whose good faith is in discharging their duties, the stockholder member have an interest and right to be informed. Karapatan nila yan eh, as owner of the as owners of the corporation. Okay, basahin na lang to. Protection of stockholder and general public from mismanagement, fraud, and other wrongful acts. As you know, di ba? Stringent yung regulatory yung regulations natin pagdating sa corporations compared to other forms of business like tawag nito like partnership and uh, sole proprietorship mas stringent pagdating sa corporation because of how large how big their impact is to the society so with that additional protection yung right to inspection ito siya sabi tin kanina yung right to inspection is not absolute may limitations yan Anong anong limitation yung purposes? Dapat proper purposes mo. Dapat you're acting in good faith. Huwag mong gagamitin sa masama. Basically yun yung mean, yun yung pinapertain nito. Ito books for foreign corporation wala kang karapatan pagdating sa inspection ng books of foreign corporation domestic lang. Trade secrets, alam natin to para sa mga ano. Basahin lang certified copies and place of inspection. Extent of the right of inspection, copies of Saksim Memoranda, pwede rin yan, agent representative, etc. Read, read all pertinent books, yan lang man. Ito, right to financial statements under section 74. A corporation shall furnish a stockholder member within 10 days from receipt of their written request, its most recent financial statements in the form of substance of, in the form and substance of the financial state, uh, financial reporting required by the commission. So, most probably, <coughs> pinafollow yan yung accounting standards ng bansa natin. So, at the regular meeting of stockholders and members, the board of directors or trustees shall present, di ba? Sa mga meetings. Sa regular meetings ng mm, sa regular meetings ng mga stockholders or members, isa sa, sa mga pinipresent ng, ano, ng board of directors is yung financial statements ng company, ng corporation. Which, in most cases, yung audited. Kasi, mas pagkakatiwalaan yan kapag audited. Kapag hindi audited, doubtful yan. Pero pag audited, yung financial statements, pagkakatiwalaan yan. So, isa yun sa mga pinipresent, di ba? Yung financial statements, yung financial reports, and uh, regards to the operations of the corporation for the preceding year. Which shall include financial statements, duly signed and certified in accordance with the code, and the rules Uh, the commission may prescribe. However, if the total assets or liabilities of the corporation is less than 600,000 pesos or such amount as may be determined appropriate by the Department of Finance, the financial statements may be certified under oath by the treasurer and the president. Anong labot nito, sir? Kasi dati, uh, kasi pag more than 600,000 yan or such other amount determined appropriate ng Department of Finance natin, kailangan ng certification galing sa isang certified public accountant. Pero ngayon, uh, pero pag less than 600 yan, or, just, or such other amount determined appropriate ng Department of Finance, kahit na i-certified under oath na lang yan ng treasurer and president, goods na yan. Above 600, or uh, other such amount determined by ano, appropriate by the Department of Finance, certified public accountant, CPA, ang kailang mag-certified yan. Below, kahit yung treasurer lang or and president. Dati, ito, salient points, mga changes, dati 50k yan. Oo, pero alam man, 1980, malaki ang 50k niyan pagdating sa mga businesses. Pero 20, 2019 na eh, so tinaasan 600,000. Kasi kung 50k yan, sole proprietorship yan eh. So in-update ngayon, 600,000 na. Oh, uh, na sure by CPA eh, kung 600 ano. Furthermore, the CDFS should be certified under oath to president instead of any just responsible officer of the corporation. The finance statement furnished shall be in the form substance uh, ng ano, uh, required by the Securities Case Commissions. Usually, accounting standard yan. Ito, the right of stockholder member to financial statements. This additional right given to stockholder member reinforces his right of inspection and examination of corporate books and records. So, yun yung ano. 
reinforces, mas pinatatag. Includes ito, the FS, shall include the following, balance sheet, ito, etc., etc. Ito, certification, security commission, duty of board to present, basahin na lang. So, basically, yan lang yung section na, yan lang yung title 8 eh. Di ba? Napakaikli lang. So, okay. Proceed tayo sa next title, which is title 9. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let's continue with Title 9 which talks about merger and consolidation. Diba, ang merger and consolidation kasama yan sa powers ng corporation. Diba, na-discuss natin sa section 35H yata yun that the corporations has the power to uh, enter into merger and consolidation. And as we have said, <coughs> the difference between a merger and a consolidation is that a consolidation uh, Uh, parang si A Corporation plus B Corporation is equals to C Corporation. Si merger naman, uh, A Corporation plus B Corporation, ang labas either si A Corporation or B Corporation. So, kay consolidation, nag-combine, nag-fusion, ha, yung dalawang corporation. Sa merger, kinain ng isa yung isa. So, ito, unang section under Title 9, which is Section 75. Itong Title 9, maikli rin to. Uh, ito, plan of merger or consolidation. Two or more corporations. So, kahit tatlong corporations sa mag-combine, oh, goods lang. Two or more eh. Yun yung sabi ng batas, allowable. So, two or more corporations may merge, may merge into a single corporation which shall be one of the constituent corporations or may consolidate into a single or new single corporation which shall be the consolidated corporation. So, as you can see here, oh, dalawa, two or, two or more corporation may merge into single corporation which shall be the one of the constituent. So, kinain ng isa yung iba. Dito naman sa consolidation, bago, new single corporation. A plus B is equal to C. Ganon. The board of directors or trustees of each corporation, party to the merger or consolidation, shall approve a plan of merger or consolidation setting forth the following. So, ito yung mga kailangan. Names, etc., etc. Basahin niya lang. Kung ano, kung, kung ano pinag-usapan nila. Terms or merger sa consideration, statement of changes, such other provisions with respect to the proposed co merger or consideration as are deemed necessary or desirable. So, negotiations yan. Now, let's go to section 76 kasi napakadali na yun. No need to discussion dito. So, section 76 provides for the stockholders or members approval. Diba? As we have discussed numerous times kay this is a significant change so kailangan ng ng approval kailangan ng ratification galing sa stockholders or galing sa members so yan dito majority yan majority of board of directors lang kailan kailangan then when subject for approval sa stockholders or members kailangan two thirds two thirds yan basahin natin now upon approval by a majority vote of each of the board of directors or trustees of the constituent corporation. Okay ah, ang constituent corporation sila yung mga ano, yung two or more corporations na yan na magko-combine, na magmo-merger or magko-consolidate. Yun yung tawag sa kanila. So, sanin? Uh, constituent corporations of the plan merger consolidation, the same shall be submitted for approval by the stockholders or members of each of such corporation. So, isasubmit nila yan for approval. Ah, uh, both corporations or all corporations involved. Lahat ng constituent corporations. At separate corporate meetings duly called for the purpose. Notice of such meetings shall be given to all stockholders or members of the respective corporations in the same manner as giving notice of regular special meetings na napag-usapan natin under section 49 of the code. The notice shall state the purpose of the meeting which is the approval of the merger consolidation and include a copy or summary of the plan or of merger or consolidation. Now, with this, ilang votes ang kailangan? Sabi ng batas, sabi ng section 76, the affirmative vote with stockholders representing at least two-thirds o two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock of each corporation in the case of stock corporation and or at least two-thirds of the members naman kapag non-stock shall be necessary for the approval of the plan. Two-thirds ang kailangan. Majority of both or of all the constituent, ano, majority ng board and two-thirds at least pagdating sa stockholders or members. Provided 
na any dissenting stockholder may exercise the right of appraisal in accordance with the code. Significant change yan ng corporation eh. So, pwede niyang i-exercise yung appraisal right niya. Provided that if after the approval of the stockholders of such plan, the board of directors decides to abandon the plan, then the right of appraisal shall be extinguished. Nawala na yung cost eh. So, may extinguish yung right of appraisal. Kasi yung cost niyan is yung plan consideration or merger. Since nawala na yun, wala na rin karapatan for appraisal. Now, any amendment to the plan or merger of consideration may be made. Hmm, pwede na yung baguhin. Provided lang that such amendment is, is approved by a majority ng respective boards ng lahat ng constituent uh, corporations and ratified by affirmative votes ng stockholders two-thirds sa stockholders or two-thirds sa members. Such plan together with any amendment shall be considered as the agreement of merger or consolidation. So, yan yung maging agreement nila. Salient points, yung sa notice-notice lang yan. So, ang daling understandable ng merger and consolidation. Ang labot lang naman dito is yung importance pagdating naman sa merger and consolidation is ilan yung votes na kailangan. Now, Articles of Merger or Consolidation. Ano mangyayari dito? Under Section 77. So, after the approval ng stockholders or members as required by the preceding section, yung two-thirds, two-thirds, Articles of Merger or Consolidation, uh, Articles of Merger or the Articles of Consolidation shall be executed by each of the constituent corporations to be signed by the President or Vice President and certified by the Secretary or Assistant Secretary of each corporation, yung mga constituent corporation, setting forth the following. Yung plan of merger or the plan of consolidation as to tax corporation, the number of shares outstanding, dito na yung mga ano nila eh, kung ano yung provisions na mga napag-usapan nila, ano yung mga magiging components ng bagong corporation na lalabas out of this. O, each corporation, number of shares to be voting, o basa nila lang, mga pinag-usapan nila. Uh, there are four additional items that must be set forth in the Articles of Merger and Consolidation na dagdagan. Now, effectivity of merger and cons or consolidation. Now, this merger consolidation is such a significant, ano, significant event. So, kailangan uh, uh, nandyan yung galamay ng, ano, ng batas. Uh, Uh, to be performed by the Securities Exchange Commission. Basically, kailangan ng approval ng regulatory body para magkaroon ng effectivity. Sabi sa Section 78, the Articles of Merger Consolidation signed and certified as required by the Code shall be submitted to the Securities Exchange Commission for its approval. Significant change yan eh. Provided that in the case of merger consolidations ng mga banks, institutions, etc., etc., and other special corporations governed by special laws, ito yun sila. The favorable recommendation of the appropriate government agency shall be first be obtained. So, pag bangko yan, uh, central bank. Pag educational institutions yan, DepEd or CHED. Pag insurance company yan, I think it's PDIC yata yan. Philippine Depository. Uh, Kalimutan ko ano yung insurance company. So, anyways, sanin ako dito. Wala tuloy tayo. If the commission is Satisfied that the merger consolidation of the corporation concern is consistent with the provisions of the law or of this code and other existing laws, then it shall issue a certificate approving the articles and plan of merger or of consolidation. At which time, pag na-issue na yung certificate na yan, then the merger consolidation shall be effective. So, kailangan ng approval no? galing sa SEC para, para maging effective yung merger or consolidation. So, kaso, paano parang nagkaroon ng problema? Sabi dito, if upon investigation, the commission has reasons to believe that the proposed merger or consolidation is contrary to or inconsistent with the provision of this code or existing laws. Anong example niyan maganda? Yung anti-competitive uh, anti laws natin. For example, na example natin to last time, si Globe and si PLDT. Pag nag-merger yan sila, pag nag-consolidation yan sila, alamat, tayo, monopoly na tayo kasi wala pa man si dito. And yung other telco providers natin, masyadong maliliit. So, parang duopoly yung telco industry natin. Na pag nag-merger yan sila dalawa, naging monopoly na. Mas malala sa duopoly. Wala na halos competition. 
So, that is detrimental to the economy, to the economy ng country natin. So, with that, pwede yan ma-disapprove ng merger or consolidation ni Securities Exchange Commission because that is harmful sa competition ng market natin, yung monopoly na yan. So, pwede yan ma-prevent ni Securities Exchange Commission. Papa, ang process dito, it shall set a hearing to give the corporations concerned the opportunity to be heard Written notice of the date and time and place of hearing shall be given to the constituent corporation at least two weeks before said hearing. The commission shall thereafter proceed as provided in this code. And pag nagpo-follow kayo ng news, maraming ano, di ba? Maraming mga kinds of ano, merger and consolidation na kailangan ng approval galing sa sa ano, sa government. Like yung sa ano, yung sa US, yung Vera, yung tel- telcos nila doon, yung Verizon nata yun, pati yung isa. Sa Europe naman, yung yung Railways nila doon, dalawang railway company. Oo, kina- uh, prevent yung merger, yung consolidation nila doon, yung merger. Marami examples yan. Na kung saan yung regulatory body, pwede niyang i-prevent, pwede niyang pigilan yung planong merger consolidation. Kapag nakita niya na, may negative effect. Section 79 tayo, which is basically the last section dito sa title Nine. So mabilis lang naman tong ano tong diska. Uh, mabi- ma- may kli lang naman kasi tong uh, mga titles following. So effect of merger and consolidation. The merger consolidation shall have the following effect. So yung constituent corporation shall become a single corporation which in case of merger shall be the surviving corporation, yung isa kinain ng isa or sa so in case of consolidation bagong uh, shall be the consolidated uh, corporation, ibig sabihin new corporation. Nag-combine sila. Nag-fusion. The separate existence of the consistent corporation shall cease except that of the surviving or the consolidated corporation kasi ito yung ano yun, result eh. Yo, the surviving or the consolidated corporation shall possess all the rights, privileges, immunities, powers, and shall be subject to all the duties and liabilities of, of a corporation organized under this code, etc. Basahin na lang natin. Basahin na lang to, Etc. Etc. Now, what are the common forms of corporate combinations? Now, pagdating, uh, pagdating nyo sa ano, third year nyo, first sem, meron yan, accounting for business combination, BAPE 7. Yan yung tuturo ko ngayon sa mga third years. BAPE 7, ADVAC 2 yan, Advanced Accounting 2. So, dyan, dyan yung merger and consolidation, paano ang accounting yan? Which is, wow! So, below are the common forms of corporate combinations. Yung isa, sale of asset, Bibenta mo yung asset mo, a union of corporations may be affected by one corporation selling or sa- selling all or substantially all of its assets to another. Diba yung section 39? Pero sa- tas pagdating ng sell ng selling ng all or substantially of all of the asset, kailangan pa ng approval ng board. Kasi ng board and the stockholders, diba? pag significantly all or sig- kapag all or significantly all, or substantially all yung assets na ibebenta, di ba? Kailangan pa ng approval ng stockholders or ng members. Kasi para siyang merger, para siyang consolidation. Or basically, combination na siya. Such sale is usually true, though not necessarily made in the course of the dissolution of the vendor corporation. So, example nito, basahin na lang. Lease of asset, sale of stock, ito, common to nangyari. Oh, for holding company, like yung Lopez Holding. Under dyan yung ABS-CBN, yung Meralco. Ang purpose ng nila is bumili ng stock of another corporation for the purpose of acquiring control. So, in that case, the acquiring corporation is called the parent or holding company. Yung corporation naman, whose stock are acquired na kinocontrol, is a subsidiary corporation. So, parent, subsidiary. Ito, ito yung mapag-uusapan natin sa ano. Ito, uh, acquisition through uh, acquisition through ano to eh through selling of assets ito acquisition through selling of stocks yan sa business combination natin yan sa third year ko akong teacher nyo so merger here two or more corporations unite one corporation which retain basically gaya na sabi kinain ng isa yung isa ito rin example consolidation ito same lang. Here, two or more corporations unite, giving rise to a new corporate body and dissolving the constituent corporation which is to exist as a separate corporation. So, A plus B is equals to C. Ito. Existing, they unite together to form C to which they transfer all their assets. A and B dissolve. The title to their property passes to C and all their rights and liabilities are assumed by C corporation. So, read na lang. Now, the consolidation may be effective 
shall be effective, gaya ng sabi natin, kapag may approval na nagaling sa Securities and Exchange Commission by is issuing a certificate. So, yun. Both methods, procedure. Ito na pag-usapan naman din natin sa ano section mismo. Uh, that section 35H, di ba? Sabi natin, the power to enter into merger consolidation is granted expressly by the law, by the court. So, pwede ang exercise ng corporation. So, ito, approval of plan. to submission to the stockholders and member for approval. Two-thirds, two-thirds votes ang kailangan. Execution, na-mention naman natin to Subject to submission to approval by SEC. Kapag uh, approved naman kay SEC, edi mag-issue certificate, then effective na yung consolidation or merger. Kapag may problema, hearing yan. Mm -mm. So, yun lang. Ganyan lang kadali si merger and consolidation. So, with that, we will proceed with the next title, Title 10. So, ito, last title of the video tayo. Title 10, which talks about the appraisal right. Ngayon, itong appraisal right, ilang beses natin to na-mention or na-discuss. Basically, yung general idea niya, general concept. It's basically, when a stockholder who disagrees with the action of the corporation, mga significant action like yung ano yung sa amendments, sa bylaws, sa merger consolidation and other stuff na provided by this code, kung saan hindi siya agree, basically, dissenting siya, then he can exercise his appraisal right. Na basically, ang sinasabi niyan, ay sige, since hindi ako nag-agree sa changes na yan, aalis na lang ako sa corporation kasi hindi ako nag-agree dyan. So with that, dissenting siya, aalis siya. So, yung shares na hinahawakan niya, ibebenta niya ngayon sa corporation. Isa sa uli niya, for a consideration, basically, same sa fair value. Yun yung general concept ng appraisal right as we have discussed sa past videos natin. But this time, under Title 10, binig, uh, mas, further, ano, mas further yung discussion about sa kanya. And as you can see, itong appraisal right, may sarili siyang title under the corporation code. Kasi it is yung ano eh, pinapakita niya na importante ito. So, Section 80. When the right of appraisal may be exercised, so kailan? Any stockholder of a corporation shall have the right to dissent, mag-disagree, and demand payment of the per value of the shares in the following instances. So yun, ang right of appraisal. And ito yung mga instances kung saan, kapag hindi siya nag-agree sa mga nangyari dito, then he can exercise his appraisal right. He can dissent and demand payment for the value of his shares. So tingnan natin. Ito, na ito familiar rin kasi dito. Ah, familiar na rin kasi kak na rin kasi kayo dito kasi na -mention, ilang beses natin ito na-mention, di ba? Na-discuss. So, yung una, in case of amendments sa Articles of Corporation, which has the effect of changing or restricting the rights of the stockholder or class of shares, <coughs> or of authorizing preference in any respect superior to those of outstanding shares of any class or of extending or shortening the term of the corporate existence. Di ba? Dito, yung restricting the rights of the stockholders, the shares niya, like, Bababaan yung par value, tatasan yung par value, i-divide, i-split up, split down. Ito, authorizing preference shares, iniba yung ano, mga benefits na receive nila. Ito, extending or shortening the corporate existence, the term of corporate existence. Ito naman, pangalawa, in case of sale, lease, exchange, transfer, mortgage, pledge or other disposition of all or substantially all of the corporate property and assets provided in this code. Di ba? Ito naman, in case of merger and consolidation, kakadiscuss lang natin sa Title 9. And lastly, in case of investment of corporate funds or funds for any purpose other than the primary purpose of the corporation. So, tandaan nyo, any other purpose other than the primary purpose of the corporation. Kung yung purpose niya is the primary purpose, ah, yung investment niya is for the primary purpose, then hindi pwedeng ma-exercise yung right of appraisal pero da kasi dapat other than the primary purpose. So, ito yung mga instances kung saan the right of appraisal may be exercised. So, familiarize kayo dito, lalabas sa board exam. So, the salient point, mga changes lang dito is yung ano, nadagdagan yung uh, agay provides a stockholder may raise his appraisal right, right to the payment service in case the corporation has investment in corporate funds for any purpose other than the primary purpose of the corporation. Kasi, ito, last, uh, tatlo lang to sila last time sa, riba, sa old code. Ngayon, dinagdagan tong sa baba. Si, ano, investment. So, the so-called appraisal right of the stockholder, 
uh, tawag dito, uh, refers to the right to, his right to demand payment of the fair value ng shares niya after dissenting. Dapat na nag-dissent siya. Hindi siya nag-accent. Hindi siya naging neutral. Dapat nag-dissent siya. From a proposed corporate action involving a fundamental change sa corporation in the cases provided by law. Ito, ito. Oo, mga significant changes. The appraisal does not, or the appraisal right does not normally belong to a stockholder as a matter of absolute right. Kasi may mga certain conditions na present, dapat, para may exercise yung right na yun. Otherwise, a stockholder can withdraw from a corporation anytime by returning his share and getting back his capital, which is truly violative of the trust fund doctrine. So, ito, ito, na-list, no? Ito yun sila, yung list yan. Dito, under section 104, ito, under to sa closed corporation, any stockholder pa closed corporation may for any reason compel said corporation to purchase his shares at their fair value, which shall not be less than the par or issued value, when the corporation sufficient asset in its books to cover its debts and liabilities exclusive of capital stock. Now, ito, as we have discussed, di ba, sa past discussions natin, if napapansin nyo, pagdating sa closed corporation, may mga exceptions, di ba? Di ba? May mga binibigyan na exceptions yan. Ganyan, ganyan kasi special si closed corporation. May mga exceptions, uh, special ano, special provisions, special treatments under sa kanya. Which will be discussed later on sa, sa separate title under sa kanya. Now, what are, uh, these are the limitations for the exercise of the appraisal right. Any instances provided by law for the exercise of the right by a dissenting stockholder must be present. Which is this one. Uh, the dissenting stockholder must have voted against. Dapat, ano, voted against. Kasi, kaya nga, dissenting stockholder, di ba? Against the proposed corporate action. So, the right is not available to a stockholder who was neither pressed, absent, at the meeting where the corporate action was rub or was present, tapos nag-abstain lang siya. Naging neutral. Dapat dissent talaga siya. A written demand sa corporation for the payment of his officer must be made uh, by him within 3 days. Ito, uh, 30 days. Letter pa yan. Uh, price must be based on the fair value. Basta ito mga limitations to. Ito na yung 30 days. So, aware naman tayo sa general idea ng, ano, diba, ng appraisal right. Ngayon, paano yan in paano yan in exercise? Ano yung procedure? Ito provided ni section 81. So, sabi ni section 81, the dissenting stockholder who votes against the proposed corporate action may exercise the right of appraisal by making a written demand sa corporation for the payment of the fair values of his shares within 30 days from the date on which the vote was taken. Within 30 days. Okay? Pag lumampas ka dyan sa 30 days, then it shall be deemed as a waiver of the appraisal right. So, pag, pag January 1, yung botohan, then by January, may 31, no? Dapat, by January 31, within, ano, basta within January, dapat, na, ano ka na, dapat, nag-demand ka na sa corporation na exercise mo yung, na exercise mo yung appraisal right mo. Pag lumampas ka, ala, wala na, waiver na yun. Consider this waiver na yun. Hindi mo na ma-exercise. Now, if the proposed corporate action is implemented, the corporation shall pay the stockholder upon surrender of the certificate or the certificate of stocks representing the stockholder's shares, the fair value thereof as of the day before the vote was taken, excluding any appreciation or depreciation in anticipation of such corporate action. Okay, may importante dito. Ano yun? Tanda nyo, kapag yung proposed corporate action was implemented, tsaka lang babayarin ni stockholder. Babayaran ni corporation si stockholder. Bakit? Kasi may mga instances na, yes, mayroon ng proposed action, corporate action. Pero, minsan na-abandon yan. So, pag na-abandon yan, yung cost of action for the exercise of the appraisal right, mawala na. So, wala nang uh, wala nang reason to exercise the appraisal right anymore. Kasi yung cost nun, which is the proposed corporate action, hindi naman nangyari. Inabandon naman. So, wala nang karapatan to exercise the appraisal right. Pero pag yung proposed action was implemented, then, yun. The corporation shall pay the stockholder. Now, take note, yung magiging basis ng fair value, kasi ito, di ba? 
hindi natin na mention sa previous ano, previous 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 discussion natin. Ano yung basis ng fair value, sir? Dito. Fair value thereof as of the day before the vote was taken. So kung nagkaroon ng botohan ng January 15, then yung basis ng fair value ng stock will be January 14. Bakit? Anong meaning nun? O, tapos dito nakalagay pa, excluding any appreciation or dep depreciation in anticipation of such corporate action. O, kasi may mga big corporate actions na yan, baka nalaman na yan sa stock market, so may anticipations na yan. So sabi dito, kaya nakalagay dyan yung excluding any appreciation or depreciation is to prevent speculative action. Oo, para hindi talaga madama yung totoong value ng stock. Kasi itong mga appreciation or, appreciation or depreciation sa valuation ng corporate shares in anticipation of such corporate action, it will affect talaga. Lalo na pag uh, aware yung market sa magiging corporate action sa proposed corporate action. So yan, kaya in-exclude yan to prevent speculations. Sana tayo? Now, second paragraph, if within 60 days from the approval of the corporate action, of the proposed corporate action, of the... Yeah. Mm. If within 60 days from the approval of the corporate actions by the stockholders, the withdrawing stockholder in the corporation cannot agree on the fair value of the... Ano, yeah. per value of the shares, it shall be determined in a price by three disinterested persons. So, yan. From the approval of corporate action. Pag what? From the approval of the corporate action. So, pag January 1 na approve, then may, ano siya, until the end of March. Para, ano? Uh, until the end of January para mag, para mag-exercise ng, uh, para mag-demand ng kanyang, ano, ng pag-exercise ng right of appraisal. Then, until the end of March, uh, until the end of February pala, or starting ng March, para, uh, tawag nito, para pag-usapan, para kung ano yung magiging fair value. Kasi sa, kahit sabihin natin na 50 yung fair value before the vote was taken, eh kailangan pa nilang pag-usapan yan. Kasi they need to exclude any appreciation or depreciation. in anticipation of such corporate action. So, magdi-disagreement yan sila. Kasi kailangan nilang exclude yung ano, yung mga valuation na wala naman dapat, na hindi dapat mag-affect sa fair value for this appraisal right. So, kapag nag-disagree sila, uh, ano, ang mangyayari, it shall be determined by three disinterested person. Ibig sabihin, wala silang pake dyan. One of whom shall be named by the stockholder, yung isa, by the corporation, yung pangatlo, shall be chosen by them. Now, the finding of the majority of this appraiser shall be final and their award shall be paid by the corporation within 30 days after such award is made. Now, provided no payments shall be made to any dissenting stockholders unless the corporation has unrestricted retained earnings in its books to cover such payment. So, yan na. Restriction yan. Limitation yan. Kahit na pag-usapan pa nila, pag walang unrestricted retained earnings si corporation, Wala pa rin. Kasi kailangan yan eh. Diyan kukunin yung pambayad. Bakit? Kasi kung titingnan nyo, kung mapapansin nyo, para siyang pag-purchase ng treasury shares. Yeah? Oh, data pan payment of corporation and of the agreed award, the stockholders are forthwith transfer the shares to the corporation. So basically, naging treasury shares yan. Yan, treasury shares, saan kinukuha yung pambayad sa unrestricted retained earnings? Uh, itong procedure na pag-usapan natin ito. Determination. O, oh, ito. Tayo ito doon naman. Uh, appreciation. This rule to avoid the controversy on the valuation date and prevent speculations on the shares. Payments shall be made only if the corporation has listed the earnings. So, oh, to prevent speculations on the share. Now, what is the effect? Section 82 tayo. Uh, section 82 talks about the effect and of demand and termination of right. So, sabi dito, from the time of demand for the payment of the fair value of the stockholder share until either the abandonment of corporate action involved or the purchase of the said shares by the corporation, all rights accruing to such share, including voting and dividends right, shall be suspended in accordance with the provisions of the code. 
except the right of the stockholder to receive the payment of the fair value of his shares. Thereof, provided that if the dissenting stockholder is not paid the value of the said shares within 30 days after the award, yung award dito, the voting and dividend right shall be restored. Of course, kasi kawawa naman eh. Hindi mo pa nababayaran, tapos suspended pa rin yung ano niya, yung other rights niya. So, para quit sila, since hindi pa nababayaran after 30 days, so ibabalik yung voting and dividend right niya. Pero within the 30 days, yung voting and dividend rights, and yung right to inspection, right to ano, reproduction ng corporate books, yun, suspended within 30 days. No? Kasi oh, from the time of demand, for the payment of the fair value until either the abandonment deduction or the purchase of the head of the corporation. So, within the 30 days, suspended. Pag after ng 30 days, hindi pa nabayaran, okay, i-restore mo yung rights. So, section 83 talks about when right to payment ceases. So, no demand for payment under this title may be made or may be withdrawn, I mean, unless the corporation consents there too. So, pag nag-demand ka sa corporation, aba, Diyos ko, hindi mo na pwedeng ba uh, hindi mo siya pwedeng mabawi, hindi mo pwedeng mabawi yung demand na yun, unless, papayagan ka na eh, corporation na, bawiin yun. Now, if however, such demand for payment is withdrawn with the consent of the corporation, or if the proposed corporate action is abandoned or rescinded by the corporation, or na-disapprove ng commission, where such approval is necessary, gaya ng, oh, anong, gaya, anong action yun? Gaya ng, ano, amendment sa bylaws, amendment sa, uh, amendment sa article si corporation, ano pa, yung consolidation and merger, yung substan, ano, di ba? Kailangan ng approval ng commission doon. Pero yung investment in a purpose other than the primary purpose, hindi na kailangan ng approval ng commission doon. So, yun, pag na-disapprove by the commission where, where such approval is necessary or if the commission determines that such stockholder is not entitled to the appraisal right, then the right of the stockholder to be paid, the fair value of the share shall cease. Mawalan siya ng karapatan. The status as a stockholder shall be restored and all the dividends distribution which would have been accrued on the share shall be paid to the stockholders. So, kahit na nasuspend, pero which would have accrued, ma-restore. So, extinguishment of right to payment. Now, dissenting stockholders who demand payment for shares no longer allowed. Ganyan sabi natin, to withdraw from his decision, wala nang, ano, wala nang, ano ito? Wala nang atrasan pa. Unless, the corporation consents to such withdrawal. Now, any of the following cases will have the effect of extinguishing the withdrawing stockholders' right to payment of his shares. Ganyan ito. Such stockholders, ano, with those is demand for the payment and, uh, and the corporation consents to that, or yung proposed corporate action is abandoned or rescinded ng corporation, di ba? Kasi, ito yung ano eh, yung proposed, gaya na sabi, na-mention natin ito kanina eh, itong proposed corporate action yan yung cause kung bakit i-exercise yung appraisal right. Eh, kapag nawala na tong, ano, corporate action na to, proposed corporate action, then there's no more purpose to exercise the appraisal right, di ba? Now, the proposed corporate action is disapproved by the ano, pangatlong instances kung saan ma-extinguish yung ano, right to payment of his shares ng ano, dissenting stockholder. Yeah. Is when the proposed corporate action is disapproved by the Securities and Exchange Commission kung saan yung approval niya is necessary. Gaya ng sabi natin kanina. Sa merger and consolidation, kailangan approval ng SEC. Sa amendment ng bylaws and ng articles in corporation, kailangan na approval ng SEC. Diba? So, pag di nasa-approve yun ng SEC, para na rin yung proposed corporate action, na parang na, ano na rin eh, na-extinguish. And lastly, the corporate the commission determines that such stockholders not entitled to a price right. Now, if any of the above cases arise, the stockholder shall not be paid the per value of his shares. His status as a, ano, as a stockholder shall thereupon be restored and all dividends distribution which would have accrued on his shares shall be paid to him. Now, who will bear the cost of ano, appraisal? 
Kung sino man yun, provided ni Section 84. The cost and expense of appraisal shall be borne by the corporation. Pero unless the fair value ascertained by the appraisers, yung ano, disinterested persons, is approximately the same as the price which the corporation may have offered to pay the stockholder, in which case, they shall be borne by the latter. So, yun, di ba? O general rule, the cost and expenses ng pag-appraise be borne by the corporation. Itong appraise, ano? Pero kapag yung appraisers na determine nila na yung ino-offer ng corporation na bayaran kay stockholder, yun rin yung or approximately the same rin yun sa i-award nila. So kapag ganun yung nangyari, si uh, stockholder na magbabayad kasi ang lason dyan, parang nagsayang sila ng oras. Na ito na yung ino-offer ng corporation. Naghanap pa kayo ng appraiser para alamin yung fair value. Eh, pareho lang naman sa in-offer ng corporation. Nagsayang kayo ng oras. So, with that, it shall be borne by the latter ng stockholder yung magbuborn ng costs and expenses. If the case of an action to recover such fair value, all costs and expenses shall be assessed by the corporation unless the refusal of the stockholder to receive payment was unjustified. So, liability and payment, basahin na lang by the corporation. So, eto notation uh, basically uh, notation and certificates right of transfer now within 10 days after demanding the payment for the share sale si dissenting stockholder shall submit the certificate of stock representing the shares to the corporation for notation that such shares are dissenting shares syempre kailangan yang panindigan yang ginawa niya eh. so since gusto niya nang humilay humiwalay sa corporation so kailangan niya nang isurrender yung Certificate of stocks niya. Failure to do so shall, at the option of the corporation, terminate the right under this title. If shares represented by the certificates bearing such notation are transferred and the certificates consequently cancelled, the rights of the transferor as a uh, dissenting stockholder under this title shall cease and the transfer shall, ho- shall have all the rights of the regular stockholder and all dividends distribution which should have accrued or such shares shall be paid to the transfer. So, yan. Like, for example, uh, tawag dito, uh, kahit na nag-uusap pa lang kayo about sa appraisal right mo, tapos bigla mo lang transfer sa transferi, pinenta mo sa transferi, transfer mo sa kanya, then mapupunta sa kanya yung karapatan and matatrato siya as stockholder. Ganun lang yun, kasimple. So, yun lang. Ilan yun? Sa video na to, tatlong titles and yung previous ano pa kanya, title 7, or ano, so, nakaapat na titles tayo this day. So, with that, uh, sakit na rin ang ulo ko. Good night. Bye-bye. Love you.